Hey my friends, it's your old pal Jordan the Lion. How are you all doing today? I hope you said well. Today we're going to have a little bit of a sad vlog. Today we're going to the recent grave of one of the great wrestlers from my lifetime. The bad guy, Scott Hall. Mr. Too Sweet, NWO. He passed away recently and today we're going to go visit his new grave and talk about his very bizarre and heartbreaking life. Days with Jordan the Lion, it begins now. Scott was raised out this way and uh, his father was uh, pretty high up in the army, but he said his entire family had a problem with alcohol. And this is something that Scott would end up encountering his whole life. He said his father was an alcoholic, his mother was, his grandparents were, and he said one day his father said to him, one day you're gonna fall. One day you're gonna slip and fall just like all of us. You just hope that you fall forward. Well, good day, buddy. How you doing? All right, I believe this is it. Trinity Episcopal Church. And I'm hoping to find it based off of a picture that when they buried him and had the ceremony, a lot of his wrestling friends were there, Shawn Michaels, Kevin Nash, like that. And they all took a photo together. I'm gonna try and match that up. I'm hoping that I'm not the first one to come out here and that there will be other fans that have visited Okay, so I think I found it. If you find this gate, which is as soon as you park, you'll see this, and sorry, they're doing maintenance on the building next door, so if you hear booms and crashes, that's what that is. His grave is actually right here. This little island section right there with all the stones. The photo that all the wrestlers took together was actually right here. And you could see the building right there in the photo. You can see this rock right here behind Kevin Nash and Sean Waltman's foot. And then they have the decorative wreath and everything there. And all the flowers are sitting on top of that stone, which makes me believe it's that stone because there's nobody with any names on these yet. However, over here, People do have them, so these are graves. You can see there's a name there and a couple of names over here, so. I tried calling the office to get exact verification as to which stone it was, because I'm 99% sure it's that one. That's where all the flowers and everything are. But uh, couldn't get a call back yet, so. Scott Hall, um, if you grew up at my age, this guy was awesome. Like, he was a great wrestler. He, I, I first knew him as the Diamond Stud. I got into watching World Championship Wrestling back in the early 90s, and he made his appearances on there working with Diamond Dallas Page, which is kind of ironic considering how much Diamond Dallas Page would help salvage Scott Hall's life in the end. But Scott Hall had a lot of demons, and that followed him through his whole life and his whole career, and it's really sad because he says you know basically his dad was in the military and they moved every single year and when he graduated he wanted to be big he, he like he said when you go in the mall you'd see all these women looking at guys that were on steroids and they'd be like wow did you see him and he just thought to himself like i want to be looked at like that i want people to say that about me so he started to get pretty big and then actually became a um, security guard for a strip club and one night he was working and he said it was over a woman. He said you know, him and another guy fighting over a woman. Uh, this guy showed up at his job, found his car, and it bashed in the windows to his car. And Scott said he was walking around looking for the guy, asking the security guard for the parking lot where the guy was that bashed his windows out. And when he went around the corner and found the guy, he said, I could just remember it like it was yesterday. He said, I walked, we walked right up to each other, and he said, I hit him hard. And as he was going down, he was reaching in his jacket to pull out a gun. And he said, so I started going for the gun too. And 
they ended up wrestling over the gun and Scott Hall ended up shooting the guy point blank in the head with a 45 and was charged with second degree murder. And he said that it actually ended up being dismissed because of insufficient evidence and for what they said was um, self-defense. But he said this is something taking somebody's life that stayed with him forever. But once he was done with you know, the legalities of that, he started to set his sights on becoming a wrestler and got his first opportunity down in Florida wrestling Dusty Rhodes. Scott was kind of born to be a wrestler in a way because he was big, he was really creative, which was a big part of wrestling, and had a lot of charisma, and also liked a fast lifestyle, which came along with the business as well, but he ended up doing pretty well there, then went on to the Crockett promotion in the Carolinas, um, and then eventually found a home in AWA with Vern Gagne. And Vern basically saw him because Scott was huge. He had, I think he was six foot eight and was just built like an Adonis. Vern saw him as the replacement for Hulk Hogan when Hulk Hogan went off to join Vince McMahon. So Scott was known as Magnum Scott Hall because he had like a mustache like Magnum PI. And uh, he was made the champion and was basically told, hey, do the moves that Hulk Hogan does. So when Scott kind of saw the writing on the wall, the AWA was starting to fall apart. He jumped ship to WCW and had a short stint there for about six months, then went to Germany and all Japan pro wrestling, and then eventually came back to the WCW. And that's when he became the Diamond Stud and started working with uh, Diamond Dallas Page and started to make a name for himself there for quite a while. However, the big leagues were WWF and he had a meeting with Vince McMahon and he basically told Vince, I'll do whatever you want me to do, whatever gimmick. You want me to be G.I. Joe, I'll be the best dang G.I. Joe you ever had. But what about, you know, a Tony Montana type character? You, you know, you ever seen Scarface? And Vince like, no. And he starts showing him like this bad guy he starts doing the accent. And he says, you need a bad guy that points his finger in people's face and tells them, you know, that he's the best. He's the bad guy. He's the one. And, uh, Vince liked it and that became his character, Razor Ramon. So Razor Ramon had a pretty good run with the WWF. Um, well, it became WWE and everything, but you know, they started him out doing jobs and he was really likable as a bad guy. So they started pairing him up with people like uh, Bret Hart and gave him Intercontinental Championship opportunities like against Rick Martel and then he won the championship and came up with all kinds of really good feuds for him. In fact, one of the ways that they realized it was like, he was so likable as a bad guy that they said, you know, we can turn him to a good guy and he'll be even more likable. So that's basically what they did. They had him doing a feud against the one, two, three kid who became six and X-Pac and was really Sean Waltman, had them doing a thing where like, one, two, three kid was basically just a, ham and egger jobber wrestler who Scott Hall was mocking and basically calling him a jobber and offering him a bunch of money if he could beat Razor Ramon. So when they had their match, he pulled off like a, a trick move and ended up pinning Razor Ramon before he was ready, took off with the money and this, this just became one of those big like big pops in the business. Everybody in the crowd went crazy because Razor Ramon was humiliated but then they decided to have Razor Ramon say like that he respected what 123 Kid did and all of a sudden they become tag team partners and he became a baby face, like I said. And so he would get his chance at being Intercontinental Champion, tag team champions with the WWE. But when it really came down to it after a few years, you know, he had signed when he was 33 and he was getting older and he's like, when am I gonna get my chance at the championship? And Vince basically said, I think you've capped out. I don't really see you going any further than you are. And so Scott Hall ended up doing the greatest move in his professional career, which was calling Eric Bischoff and telling him that he would be willing to leave WWE if the money was right. So Eric Bischoff, whose company WCW was backed by Ted Turner, Ted was very competitive and wanted to make a splash in wrestling and really hadn't done it the way he wanted. He hadn't been a real competitor and so he was willing to throw some money out there and so Bischoff offered uh, Scott Hall m more money than he had ever had by like double or triple of what he'd ever been offered in 
WWE and he went to, Scott Hall went to Vince McMahon and said, look, I don't want to leave, but this is what they're offering me. If you can match it, I'll stay. And Vince said, I can't match it. So Scott Hall left and made his debut over on WCW Nitro. Now it's awesome when he did because he just basically came out of the crowd in like a jean shirt and jeans and like just walks in, takes the microphone. You all know who I am and me and my friends are gonna show you what we're here to do. Basically making it seem like, you know, all these people that have watched WWE would recognize him and thought, wait a minute, are, are the WWF wrestlers gonna come and like invade this show? And then, you know, Kevin Nash had found out because Scott Hall and he were great friends. It was like, he knew how much money Scott was getting and, and uh, he had made a deal also through Scott Hall and Eric Bischoff for a huge amount of money. So then Kevin Nash came out and he made his debut as part of the Outsiders with Scott Hall and they started causing havoc all over wrestling. Basically, they made it look like it was real. They made all, everything they were doing, they were beating up commentators and they were taking the cameras backstage and they were beating up people backstage and they were doing so much stuff that fans actually thought it was real. The fan talking right now thought it was real and you know people started calling the police saying like you got to get down to the arena these wrestlers are beating up people and everything i mean it was crazy people it was really like the old war of the worlds when they read it over the radio and people just thought it was for real like this was that deal and most of this was scott hall's idea that's what people you know never really knew was that he deserved so much credit for being a creative mind he came up with the razor ramon gimmick and he came up with these outsider guys coming in and even when they made Sting the opposition to the NWO doing the whole crow bit. That was his idea. He recommended that for Sting. Now the icing on the cake was when Hulk Hogan switched and he joined the NWO and came out there and was causing a scene out in the middle of a ring, beating up Macho Man and everything. And all this stuff's going on with the Outsiders. And so this became a huge faction in wrestling and it actually was the first time that WCW had ever taken over the WWE in the ratings wars, and they became a huge, huge success. In fact, many people said the success of this gave Scott Hall and Kevin Nash carte blanche to start making the calls as to who got to do what in the matches, like who got to win, who was gonna advance in the company. They were kinda really rising in the ranks and, and making a lot of decisions with Eric Bischoff. Now sadly in 1998, Scott had, you know, he had been living this huge lifestyle as a wrestler and that includes drugs and drinking every night and partying and he was a part of the clique with Shawn Michaels and Kevin Nash and those guys. And they just, you know, everybody in wrestling at that time kind of partied and when everybody else stopped, he didn't stop and continued to go until uh, he started showing up drunk to matches and they even kind of wrote that in as part of his gimmick They would call him last call hall and he would always come walking out with a drink in his hand But he was really having problems his wife had filed for divorce He had two kids and he loved his kids But he's never home to give them any attention really never saw them and started to view himself as a failure as a dad and was a you know had, had that murder happened early on in his life and he just had a lot of demons that he started battling. So he went through countless rehabs, both with WCW, they would send him off and then he would come back and he wouldn't really be any better. And then WWE hired him to do the NWO angle and he just wasn't the performer that he used to be. And same deal, he just, uh, he was showing up drunk and everything. So they dismissed him and he basically started working on the independent circuit, making most of his living that way and sadly would for the next 10 years just have constant run-ins with the law uh, disorderly conduct duis you name it he said during that time he rolled and totaled like eight cadillacs he said he was completely out of control he started ended up having um seizures because he had had heart failure and then he had had like multiple surgeries on different things and um, sadly, it just, it never really, never really made him sober up. No matter how bad things got, he really wasn't sobering up. In fact, one time he, uh, he was drinking so much that he started calling his friends and was basically saying that he was going to kill himself. He was going to drink himself to death that night and had even written a suicide note. So his friends called the police and said, you know, to go help this guy. He ends up in the hospital and then 
two days after he's out of the hospital, he's at an independent wrestling event, drunk, and they literally had to carry him out to the ring to wrestle, and it was just totally humiliating. So eventually, his old pal, Diamond Dallas Page, who he broke into the business of WCW with, really, as like the Diamond Stud, he, uh, Diamond Dallas Page came out and offered to help Scott Hall and offered to move him into the accountability crib, and Scott Hall started to get better and clean up his life, and. He'd never really been a great father and his son was now an adult and wanted to be a wrestler so Scott became his mentor and started training him to become a wrestler as well. And like Scott said, he had everything going for him except for Hall being his last name and having to live through the bad reputation his father had left. No matter how bad things got, the fans always loved Scott Hall. They, they never turned on him and same with his friends, the people in wrestling really loved him, no matter how far on the bottom he got. They were always kind of there to let him know that they would support him if, if he needed it. And so Dime Dallas Page took him in, helped clean up his life. But also there came a point where he needed a hip operation, a pacemaker, and the fans ended up kicking in through uh, donation funds and ended up helping him get those surgeries that he needed. So he basically lived the rest of his life um, dealing with seizures, taking a cocktail of 11 prescriptions per day, and, uh, and having a pacemaker, and yet was still turning out to independent wrestling events, and you know, just the guy was always trying to make his life better, but battling demons, and like he would say, he's like, the problem was always like, it's hard for me to tell people not to do, not to drink and do drugs, because it was fun and it does what it's supposed to do. It, it makes you forget and everything, but he's like, the problem is when you wanna quit, they won't let you quit. For years, Scott Hall's friends were terrified that he was gonna die, or they, they actually would say, Sean Walton would say, I just, I, I planned on it. I just kinda was always ready for it. But Kevin Nash would say, I always told people when they said, you know, Scott's gonna, he's gonna end up killing himself this way. I'd always tell them, nah, you gotta drive a stake through that guy's heart to get him to die, but. It was a sad way that he ended up going. So I actually did just get a call back from the office and they confirmed, yes, indeed. I described where I was at and she said, this is in fact where he is buried, right next to the rocks on the corner. She said the biggest stone right there on the corner is his. Now she said, the top row are for people that are intended to be buried individually and the bottom row are for, for um, more than one. And so she said, the plan is uh, Scott's mother is going to be buried. She would like to be buried with him. Now here's the, the kicker to this, is that uh, I'm gonna go to her office now, and I'm gonna try and, um, we're gonna talk because she said the headstone was engraved. She said they, they already received the bill for it, and it was engraved last week. She isn't sure why it's not out here yet, but I'm hoping that maybe we can call the company and maybe they will let me come see it since they're gonna put it out here pretty soon anyway. That would be something, wouldn't it? If we got to see it before it's placed. So sadly, Scott's end came when he had taken a fall and had broken his hip and he was in the hospital for the uh, hip replacement and ended up getting three blood clots and one of them got loose. And the family had him on life support and um, had to make the decision what to do they, uh, he held on for quite a while. And even, uh, I remember Kevin Nash posting that once they took Scott off of life support, he still didn't want to go. He lasted for hours, but, uh, but sadly he ended up passing away. One really cool thing that I just, I, you know, I love about Scott Hall is that he's one of the few people in wrestling history to be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame twice. He's in as Razor Ramon, and then he's also in as a member of the NWO Outsiders. And, you know, that just happened shortly before his passing, so it was great that he got to live and see that. Now I'm gonna go to the office and see if we can't uh, maybe get to see his headstone. All right, so I got a little bit of information that uh, I think is worth sharing here. First off, couldn't see the headstone, but what we could see she printed out exactly what the headstone's gonna look like. So there you can see this stone right there, and it's gonna have 
Scott Oliver Hall on top. His mother will be on the bottom and the family also purchased the top stone as well. And, uh, and what they told me was, cause I was kind of like, it, was this a family cemetery? I don't see anybody else out here. I didn't really understand why he was buried here. And they said, no, what happened was Scott's brother is actually a sheriff here in town. And when Scott passed away, they, uh, call the local, um, funeral parlor here and ask them for recommendations for places for, um, crematorial burials. And that director said, well, if you're going to have him anywhere and it's cremation, bring him to Trinity because they have a beautiful columbarium and that's this. And they said, it's more artistic. It's beautiful. And everybody here, in fact, they were telling me like, other than, you know, maybe one person in the last five years, they've all been cremations. So Scott's brother, she said, when you're driving around town, you might see, um, the last name Hall running for sheriff, that's his brother. And she said, and he better get it because he's such a good guy. He's very much loved. But she said that's how it basically ended up happening was just at a uh, recommendation of a local funeral director for a good place for, uh, you know, crematorial burials that have a little bit of art or a little bit of color to them. And like they said here, this year round, they put flowers in here that have color year round. So. He's not in a bad place. He's got a view of the water. So they should be putting the headstone down at some point, anytime soon. But in the meantime, that's what it will look like. Rest in peace. Too sweet. They said they have had two or three people come out here looking for his grave and the reason that there's nothing on top is because that's kind of one of the ways that they designed it they didn't want or they have kind of strict rules as to what can be left out for decoration so it's mainly just flowers and uh, you won't see action figures and things like that out here well my friends thank you all for watching this was a really sad day for me to come out and visit Scott Hall but the guy provided so much amazing entertainment and whether you loved him or hated him, like it was all the same to him. Like he said, he was never afraid to die. He said, you know, to him it was just kind of like, what do you do when the chanting and the cheers stop anyway? So, you know, he was a guy who lived for the limelight and uh, really gave his mind, body, soul, and family to the business. And uh, at least he's remembered as one of the all-time greats. If it's your first time here, please subscribe, please hit the like button, and please ring that bell for notifications. We will see you all next time. Have a great night, and goodbye.